module 18 intrusion prevention system or ips so ips software blade in checkpoint firewall there was complete and proactive intrusion prevention right it there was thousands of signatures behavior and primitive protections it gives another layer of security on top of checkpoint firewall technology so basically ips is integrated in checkpoint firewall right so most of the next generation firewalls they come with integrated uh, ips in fact no separate appliance is required for ips ids and i hope you understand like ips and ids so the same device or maybe the software blade if it is in only detection mode detection mode alarm and alert only then ids and like in prevention mode then ips right so uh in like older days like we uh, in cisco environment we used to uh, use two different terms like promiscuous mode right and inline deployment in ips so if ips is deployed in the network path right in the path itself data is passing through the device then inline mode means ips intrusion preventive system and if ips is like not deployed in the network path outer path deployment right connected with the switch and then here like we configure a span port switch port analyzer or we can call it tap mode so that's what ids is intrusion detective system or promiscuous mode deployment same device roles are different deployed inline then yes will provide protection also deployed out of path not inline tap mode promiscuous mode only detection alarms alert right no action is taken traffic is not blocked anyway in checkpoint as for there is no separate appliance for the ips ips is what a software blade a software blade only integrated in the firewall itself and most of the next generation firewalls means integrated ips in palo alto also like there is a vulnerability protection profile a security profile there in checkpoint we have ips right so it's very good feature and if i take one or two example of ips so for example here if uh, your security gateway maybe any uh, web application server means web server application servers database server right complete web application and uh, let's say patching is not done on the server there are a lot of vulnerabilities on the server right security loopholes okay uh, maybe developer has done a lot of like uh, mistakes in fact or maybe uh, some known or unknown in fact uh, a uh, common vulnerability exploits or cb right under like uh, maybe a sql server or web server or application server so with the help of proper ips profile we can prevent uh, like these like application servers from a lot of uh, attacks in fact right like sql code injection attack or maybe cross site scripting attack and there are some other attacks as well so we can prevent like uh, applications from different attacks right with proper ips profile also uh, a lot of network layer like scanning and other stuff we can do like protection with ips so uh, it's very good feature like uh, like uh, threat prevention feature ips and uh, obviously in order to use ips there should be uh, active license because signatures like this is signature this right so um, signatures like need to be updated at regular interval of time right so i hope you understand like third prevention means like proper license package ips protection includes what detection and prevention because we are using uh, like uh, uh, ips we are using the term ips intrusion preventive system not only detection right of specific known exploits and vulnerabilities for example protection from a specific common vulnerability exposure cbes right like remote code execution or ldep code injection attack or sql code injection attack 
uh, detection and prevention of outbound malware communications yes detection and prevention of protocol misuse that can also be controlled with ips uh, which in many cases indicates malicious activity or potential threat right so for lab demonstration i'm going to uh, like first uh, create uh, auto nat policy if not created and one access control policy why because uh, this web server in the dmg should be accessible from external network side right and the application has like a lot of known like vulnerabilities so we'll first like exploit we'll try to you know like do some attack on the server without ips profile and then i'll go ahead and create uh, ips profile i'll use that profile in the threat prevention policy just to show you practical demonstration even we can take uh, uh, do some uh, like network uh, layer uh, uh, production also maybe uh, we can simply uh, set the limit of ping packet right maximum ping size packet size we can initiate uh, ping traffic from this computer if ips software blade is in place activate it and then we'll see like whether gateway is uh, preventing like long like maximum i mean like the ping packet uh, bigger than like a larger than the specified value right so uh, so in both the direction we can check i mean like like traffic hitting from internet side external untrusted and even from trusted towards untrusted right but before that uh i want this server uh, like to be accessible from external network side so if i want to access the server with any nated ip address so should be accessible so gateway interface is i i believe already configured let me quickly check that uh yes so interface eth3 ip already configured here 10. 128.20.240 mass and status is up so and then next let me quickly check the gateway interface to closing so select the gateway gateway one edit right so network management Uh, already reflected here in case not reflected then select gateway get interfaces get interfaces without toplosy or with toplosy like there are two options right so better like if you uh, get interfaces with toplosy that's anti-spoofing zone and all that and even like we can uh, override setting for example ets3 is not the internal of this network it's dmg so let me put it in dmg so here it's not in network override and this interface dmg and even i want to put it in the mg zone here already created good okay so properly like mention zone and also like uh, dmg are like in like inside or outside and now uh for nat rule as uh, so there is no static nat rule or auto nat rule i mean like the aesthetic aesthetic i mean uh one to one translation right it's a bit confusing in checkpoint there are two types of nat aesthetic height there are two different ways to configure nat right automatic and manual so i'm going to use man, uh, automatic nat rule so just create host object if not created here so host and i will name it uh, application server and my application server real ip address is 10 dot what is ip 128 dot 10 dot 128 dot 150 no 240 i think 240.150 so 20.240 and 20.150 so it's 20 all right and here proper ip address right 
name and then IP address and uh, enable NAT aesthetic and use any IP address from external network side. So I'm going to use 120 IP address, right? 1 times 20 means like look at the network diagram. So 120 means any IP address from external network side is 101 because I'll be accessing this server with the same IP, NATed IP, right? So I will access web server from here, from this computer, right? And this machine IP address is 192.168.1.71. So what, how I will access the server, DMG web server, with the IP 120. Understood? 120. So request will hit the gateway. Gateway will perform destination IP address translation. So destination IP address 192.168.1.120 will be translated to DMG web server. So this way I can easily access web application server. So that's my first objective, but not only NAT policy, corresponding security policy also. So 120 perfect okay so rules are generated automatically we don't have to worry about art configuration and that is why i just created automatic static nat rule no manual nat rule already we have covered like in detail about proxy r manual automatic r in the like nat section right Okay, and here there is one DMG server access rules source any and knighted IP, but now I want to uh, put another knighted IP. So for that create host object and this is my NAT IP for this uh, uh, web application and 120. So here also 192, 168, 120 right already there was one rule in fact so if you remember so we created this rule number four in uh, uh nat section in fact so dmg server and nat policy and as said there is no threat prevention there is no threat prevention policy even uh, ips software blade is not enabled on the gateway right so blade is not enabled so no matter whether there is threat prevention policy or not threat prevention policy no blade means like uh, no threat prevention so now install policy the policy includes blades that have an expired contract or contract that is about to expire yes about to expire in my case no problem install policy and once it is successfully done, then we will try to access DMG application server with NATed IP. That is 192.168.1.120. And there is no IPS protection. There is no IPS profile, right? So taking time, threat prevention. First time when, uh, not threat prevention, oops. No threat prevention, even threat prevention also takes like longer time, but yes, like a solution, no. So it's a slow installation, not a speed up. And just warning message, so we can ignore warning message. Our warning message is about the same, like application control, blade license will be expired on 26th of August. So installation succeeded, right? So Good. Installation succeeded. Close this, minimize, and I'm going to access server with the IP address 1.20. Close this. Enter this HTTP column double slash 192.168.1.120. Right? So 1.20 is Nated IP address and yes, this like site access here. Now, if here like in the username section, if I put some like SQL code instead of proper username password, I don't know like the username. I don't have username and password, so 
I want to say like or one is equal to one and then hash right SQL code in fact can you see here let me make it big right you can see now properly says so SQL code no password here I'm going to hit down OK and let's see what happens so it's not a proper username password SQL code injection attack so what I'm trying to do let me explain it what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to access web server, web application server with the NATed IP. Here, I'm also sitting on the same network segment, right? Machine IP 192.168.1.71. So I'm sending HTTP GET request of protocol version 1.1. And in this GET request, inside HTTP header, Inside HTTP header, apart from other like attributes are filled, like the HTTP method, version, keep alive, right? User isn't, user isn't, keep alive is enabled, obviously, and uh, accept encoding, which like uh, like compression method is supported, like gun zip or D flat plus uh, language right HTTP method like get method get is the method basically right or maybe a post method so I'm putting this in not get method basically in post in fact post so what I'm trying to do I'm trying to insert SQL code inside this HTTP header inside HTTP data right so code here SQL code it's a SQL code injection attack uh, my uh, objective is to like uh, get like user details user details like saved on my SQL database so basically this web application like OS is like uh, Linux based Apache and my SQL is the database server right all, all like integrated in single uh, virtual machine but will this checkpoint gateway a firewall check this like whether there is any malicious code or not no by default no what checkpoint firewall will do obviously will check access control policy whether request is http or not right will also do destination NAT translation route lookup but one will not look inside http data and in case of HTTPS, obviously HTTPS again like uh, encrypted even, right? So if you remember, so in uh, HTTPS inspection policy section, I explained like nowadays most of the traffic are HTTPS based. So in checkpoint, we can like configure both outbound HTTPS inspection and inbound HTTPS inspection. So for this scenario, inbound inspection policy inbound HTTPS inspection should also be enabled right for outbound outbound HTTPS inspection okay so that's one like a very important note like you make a note of it that for uh, like IPS for threat prevention antivirus even for antivirus right HTTPS inspection very much required okay so gateway Obviously, it's not going to uh, check like uh, this uh, malicious or SQL code injected uh, by using HTTP protocol, right? And as, as a result, this should be then successful, right? So at first place, in fact, there is issue with the server, obviously, right? So server has a lot of uh, weaknesses, security threats, loopholes, right? Obviously, the best practice is to just do proper patching, try to fix all the issues on the server. But in case if you are unable to do that, right, or maybe there is no like uh, hot fix for that vulnerability. So if possible, then is protect from gateway. Use IPS, intrusion prevention system. In Palo Alto, use vulnerability protection profile. Like a, it's a security profile. So let me head down enter first here and see here I'm successfully in now. 
if i click here your control panel and basically this site is especially designed for you know like lab demonstration and all that so and that is why like there, there are a lot of like vulnerabilities right uh, so if i click your control panel then you know see like with the help of a school code injection attack now like very much i'm in control of user database like the username credit card email id right a lot of information i can find with it right so can we like do something can we uh, protect this kind of attack sql code in injection attack yes how with ips software blade right so four system is temporarily sometime it happens like uh, is showing something like uh, a red so will come up very soon no problem right so not to worry with it so edit and i'm going to enable custom threat prevention and i'm interested only in ips so one check all the option right so in custom threat prevention yes i can enable a specific blade ips blade only hit down okay first step done blade activated enabled maybe after policy installation this like red cross or this one like we can get rid of this <laughs> red symbol in fact which is very dangerous right <laughs> so next step security policy threat prevention policy so what i'm going to do i'm going to create my own profile right i'm not going to use built in profiles so in threat prevention in custom policy there are three built in profiles okay and i request you to pay attention here not confusing but like you, you need to pay attention so i selected threat prevention and then custom policy and here profiles so in profile there are three built in profiles basic optimize and strict built in profiles right but no i don't want to use built in profile i want to create my own profile i want to make some changes so and maybe i don't need like all like uh, software blades to be enabled in that profile uh, i want only ips blade to be enabled in the profile so just select any one strict i'm selecting a strict and then make a copy of it right a clone here so clone clone means a copy right a strict clone so you can give any name so let's say i'm going to give it name our ips profile right so just i'm like going to use ips and clone ips protection user modification activation Yes, like even I'm going to make some changes here. So wait here. Let this be copied first. So basically, we are creating a replica, a replica of built-in uh, strict profile, right? And then I will just make necessary adjustment in the profile. I will maybe I can change the action. If not block, then I will put uh, in block mode for a specific uh, or threat. In fact. and once like ready with the profile i'm ready i'm done with the profile part then i will go to threat prevention section and then i will create a threat prevention custom policy so is updating profile and see here uh, taking time so uh, yes like uh, sometime checkpoint uh, firewall takes like 2 uh, to 5 minutes time even right so now is copied here all ips profile here double click now i want to edit so do i uh, need third emulation no do i need third extraction no anti bot no anti virus no so now in this profile there is only threat prevention ips and then here again activation mode high confidence then prevent medium confidence prevent low confidence detect is okay right only detect because low confidence right not very much like even 
uh, uh, IPS like uh, knows that okay it's a threat so low confidence not very much confident and then if I go to this uh, IPS section here again here uh, protection to activate so activate IPS protection according to the following additional properties so even you can uh, put here some additional uh, and uh, no need to put anything here because category any name any is, is perfect so any any and uh, activate and I don't I don't want like any uh, protection to be deactivated so I want to leave this field blank and protection is enabled all good general policy okay head down okay so profile is successfully created but I want to see the IPS protection first whether for SQL code injection attack what is action detect or block or what action is like here in this IPS protection so after creating profile after creating profile I'm going to uh, like uh, edit some option in this IPS protection and here like a lot of signatures thousands of signature and uh, if you want to put a filter here on the right hand side you see like a critical high medium low very low type wise like severity confidence wise so a lot of like uh, medium confidence I, I think more than 11,000 like medium thousand of thousands of thousand signatures here right so now I want to search for SQL so quote because there are too many in fact okay so SQL quotes so let me see so many so we are interested in SQL injection over HTTP yes so here like uh, I can now find uh, SQL injection over HTTP right but before that uh, click here view and we want to change this action maybe in this profile only so select our IPS profile hit down ok right so now I'm editing my own profile double click SQL or SQL injection over HTTP and in this uh, set the action here prevent already uh, set here according to profile or override even we can uh, do override also we can do packet capture so already uh, action is here prevent so we don't have to do anything right so already like in profile itself action is prevent so no like change required here and then there is another SQL is there any other SQL injection signature based on as you too many other but they're like for is different like uh, Zoomla and sent OS for different platforms just we are interested in standard right and now if I go to uh, this policy not this one custom policy so I want to create a rule ever right as just name it of uh, our IPS policy any name a scope is any no problem and here I want to use my own profile only once after that IPS is enabled on this profile install on gateway only there is only one gateway so even if we don't specify anything so perfect but in case if like multiple gateways and you want to uh, push this threat prevention policy on a specific gateway so you can make your selection so what we did so far so like first we created a clone a replica a copy of existing profile a strict profile then we also uh, checked like the protection in fact whether what was the action like detect or not and now we are going to uh, apply the policy so just I created a custom policy use the same profile here so profile is called here in fact attached with the custom policy and then I'm going to push this policy on gateway right 
And uh, uh, in the meantime, let me uh, do one more uh, like setting also so that we can test like both all together. So again, if I go to IPS protection and uh, if I search for ping, can we specify ping size here, maximum ping size here, right? I can see maximum ping size. So select this maximum ping size and uh, for this profile or IPS protection. So default action is accept, uh, but I want to drop track even packet capture we can enable and uh, maximum size limit I want to specify here maybe uh, 800 bytes or so so anything beyond that means drop okay so I just change this maximum ping size and also let me check the gateway so uh, here is the wrong profile in fact so I need to select our IPS profile here inspection setting profile recommended inspection recommended and default there are two options so yes I want to go with recommended only geo policy in fact is not in use so what I did now I changed like uh, the, the gateway in fact uh, security gateway not optimized we want to use our own like IPS profile so we changed and hit down okay so all look Good now, so install policy now and make sure that threat prevention is also enabled along with the access policy. And even access policy is not required here because already there is access policy to allow traffic from untrusted to DMG, DMG web server. So just we want to install threat prevention policy, right? So easy to create threat prevention in checkpoint, right? Just create a profile, make changes in that profile, set different protections, IPS protections, right? And once you are ready with the profile with like IPS protections, then use profile in threat prevention policy, simple. And then install policy on the gateway. Once it's successfully done, and the very first time we are doing so, taking time, so ping like why I did that because I want to check like uh, from here, right? If I try to ping any external interface IP, maybe the packet size is anything like uh, greater than 800 bytes. So obviously gateways will drop here and uh, we can check from ping as, as, as well as from the log also, right? So threat prevention log, I mean like IPS blade log, we can check that. And another uh, like change that uh, uh, not exactly change in fact already uh, action was like uh, like prevention action was in prevention mode uh, for SQL right injection attack so already action was like prevention so policy no problem and then here make sure that threat prevention is enabled here right and I'm sure like after successful installation of threat prevention policy this like sign uh, will go off from here, right? And really I want to get rid of this, you know, like red symbol is very dangerous. So <laughs> no one likes red, or at least like status of any like gateway management server. So policy installation is in place. So I hope like you understand like how profiles are created, threat prevention policy, enabling like software blade or module, right? And it's again like gateway basis. So if you want like threat prevention policy on a specific gateway, yes, you can do that. So I'm waiting for this policy to be successful installation and then we will do verification again we will launch the same like from here sql code injection attack and also ping right a ping of like packet size uh, maybe 1000 byte or like 1200 or anything like uh, greater than 800 bytes so it's still not done yet so head down details so first like Threat prevention succeeded. 
with warning warning is i am sure like about the same uh license contact yes right so warning can be ignored no error as such warning only installation in progress for what access control policy so third permission policy done access control also done with the same warning so no need to uh, check that warning because we know like the warning message so minimize this So now again, like uh, we are going to do the same from here. And see here, this site cannot be reached. What I did, I use the same, right? Let me increase font size, same SQL code, but this time, no, right? Not allowed to pass through, why? Because of IPS. So checkpoint firewall has like signature to identify this SQL code injection attack over HTTP. So SQL code injection attack over HTTP. So already checkpoint firewall has like uh, IPS signature to identify this attack, right? So HTTP data inspected by uh, like match with the IPS signature and since like uh, firewall definitely would match with the signature like one is equal to one and then hash is something like a code in fact uh, inside http data and that is why not allowed so can we uh, do verification from the log so if i go to logs and monitor section uh, let me show you and uh, i'm interested in uh, not like 24 hour logs and uh, not the source ip is not correct so let me remove this filter refresh and uh, for thread prevention built-in query there is here thread prevention and all are but like we want so yes we can select all thread prevention so look at this uh filter coder family thread or endpoint or mobile like all thread prevention and i can see here one uh is scanned and double click so is even ips threat and action prevent right and the access to dmg web server from here ips policy ips profile and you can also see like the resource and uh Packet capture also we can open this captured packet in Wireshark and I'm going to show you so we can find like SQL code also inside captured packet. If you want to read about like this thread, then you can go to thread wiki, right? And uh, if I click here more, so here also I can see a lot of useful information and uh, SQL scan help Chrome the browser used by attacker and then if i head down more here and then the super important uh threat prevalence true protection type vulnerability and here is the attack sql injection http protocol sql injection server and third year can we also uh, open the captured packet because i enabled uh, to capture packet and yes here like there is cap file so directly we can open with wireshark so i'm going to open this captured packet right double click so automatically like captured packet and there like uh, since uh, uh, like uh, we uh, like inserted sql code inside http post data so from Wireshark, even we can properly see like the code, even code like inside HTTP header, the same code, right? With HTTP method and some other information. So captured packet, yes, can be used for further analysis. And now captured packet is opening automatically with the Wireshark. So if Wireshark is installed on your computer and look at this packet, post message, right? So as I mentioned, post 
and I can see here like the source IP, source port, destination port, and uh, what about uh, and then you, you just see here post message login dot php URL HTTP protocol one dot one version and carries return like in HTTP like each line should end up with carries return. It's like very much like uh, enter key as we head down when we type any text or something. And then the host field here, IP address, connection key, PLI, content length, cache control. And also I can see the origin in fact, content type, user isn't also, and uh, accepting coding, gun, zip and deflate supported and language, English, US, cookie, I can see here, cookie, right? Inside HTTP header. But uh, we are interested to know the code and see here the code right form item username and password and then action go so it's very useful right capture packet so i hope you understand like how uh, we uh, and, uh, and how easy it is in checkpoint using like ips ips software blit, right and even you can uh, like see a like prevented sql injection scanning attempt originating from this against this so it's really uh, like logging is also very good in checkpoint firewall and outly and what about another option that we set from here test pc so test pc here this ip address is 10.0.0.150 right so if i try to ping any ip let's say this minus length maybe just 200 bytes so why it is not getting through so we need to check the security rule first but 200 bytes so 200 bytes should have been like allowed but why so check the access control i believe in identity awareness we change like right that's all users no so in identity awareness uh, lab in fact so i'm going to select here a uh, zone maybe trusted from trusted to untrusted or internet yes not just install policy so this rule number seven is to allow telnet ssh and eco request so threat prevention not required right no change in the threat prevention policy only in the access control so let this be successful uh, yes done and now initiate ping again and it's getting through right allowed but if i change the size uh, dot zero dot one dot twenty eight minus l anything let's say twelve hundred bytes or something beyond eight hundred right rto why because of ips threat prevention policy can we see this drop packet here yes again go to logs and monitors refresh the same threat prevention we are interested in and see here another this 12.0.1.28 and let me show you prevented maximum ping size originating from 10.1.1.50 against 12.0.1.28 threat ips prevented rule number and the reason packet data size 1200 bytes equal request type 8 code 0 yes and uh, can we see the reason so head down uh, more and uh, and even like uh, yes here it is protection name max ping size large ping so attack name large ping and maximum ping size production detail right so i hope you understand how to create threat prevention by using ips software uh, blade in fact so we used only one blade in the policy in next module we will use or enable antibot and antivirus software blades right 
here antivirus and antibot but profile profile that we created has only ips profile ips played in fact right in the profile so what i will do i will activate these two also in the same profile so if you look at the custom policy the policy that i created so there is only one ips only so in next like we will enable antibot and antivirus also in the same like uh, profile in fact we will make change here and automatically will get reflected here so we don't have to uh, change uh, custom policy only like in profile in fact right okay